Roundup has not been working as well in the last few years as it worked in the prior 10 or 15 years, Darren. So what are we gonna do to help a farmer make his Roundup work better? Well, okay, I'll say this. I can spray Roundup, I can mix everything exactly the same, I can do everything the same today, and I can do the same thing next week and it may perform differently based on the environmental conditions, sure. the stage of growth of those weeds. I mean, there's a lot of factors okay, going so on. Okay, so let's talk specifically about it. What would you do stage of growth? What do you want? All right, let's talk about this in a burn down situation. If you've got just tiny little grasses out there and you go out with a pretty low rate of Roundup in a burn down, if you've got decent weather, you're gonna have excellent results almost every time. And I talk to guys all the time that say, man, I did a burn down last year and I only used you know, 16 ounces or something, and it worked great. Now this year, it didn't work very well. And when I go look at those fields, more times than not, it's either winter annual weeds, and that's why we're having a problem, and also broadleaf weeds. Just broadleaves in general, there are more growing points. It's tougher to kill them with Roundup than it is those grasses. Yeah, but as a general statement, we want small. Now let's talk about other environmental factors. Temperature, what do we want for temperature? Well, if you're still getting nights that are below freezing, that's gonna be a challenge. What we're looking for is if we're 50 degrees and above consistently, then the Roundup is gonna work as advertised. It's gonna be very good. But if you're getting cooler than 50 degrees at night, what we recommend is either waiting to spray until the temperature warms up, or if you do need to get going on your spraying, just increase your rate of Roundup. If the nighttime temperatures are below 50 degrees, you're gonna to have to increase your rate 50% to overcome that. Okay, if it's below freezing though, that's where we want the person absolutely not spraying. There's, there's just no point. Right, there's just no fix to that. Okay, let's talk about water volume. The less, the better. Yeah, and that's one of the things that a lot of people just don't get because every chemical company out there says, well, you need more water, you need more water. But here's what it comes back to, how concentrated is your droplet? Darren was just mentioning those little weeds that you're gonna spray early on in the spring. Can a little weed take all kinds of water volume? Absolutely not. The more water you put on, the more runoff you're gonna have. That doesn't do you any good. Yeah, Roundup doesn't only, have soil activity. If you can only stick a few drops on each weed, you need to make sure those drops are concentrated. So we like to use the lower end of the labeled rate in terms of water volume. The other side of that though, Brian, is that droplet size. And we we're talking about different spray tips. There's a lot of farmers out there and our farm is one of those places where we're using tips that make bigger droplets just to help us out with drift control. Right. However, you're doing that at the expense of weed control. You're not gonna get as good a weed control with those great big droplets, especially on these little weeds. A lot of those droplets will hit and you'll get some splash off. Okay, let's talk about spray adjuvants along with the Roundup. Well, first, let's step back. What's loaded glyphosate versus non-loaded glyphosate? Well, that's a good question. In some cases, it's not a whole lot different, but we're talking about we've got some kind of a surfactant in there that helps improve the performance of the glyphosate. In many cases, it's a cationic surfactant, which will help glyphosate but won't necessarily help any tank mix partners. Okay, so when we talk about surfactants though, we see a lot of universities, and even for us now, we're telling farmers, if you want a little bit better control with Roundup, I'm not saying dramatic, but a little bit better control, throw some non-ionic well, surfactant and in I'd there. Say it's not this, Brian, you. I've talked to a lot of farmers that say, wow, I put a quart of non-ionic surfactant per 100 gallons of water, and my performance looked like I just increased that Roundup rate by 50%. It right. really does help, especially when you're in drier than normal conditions or cooler than normal conditions. The other thing is adding ammonium sulfate. And there are a lot of ammonium sulfate replacement products out there, but they don't really do the jobs that ammonium sulfate does. Well, let's does. talk about what ammonium sulfate does. Number one, it's in there to tie up hard water ions. That's the most important thing. So we've got calcium, magnesium, that kind of stuff in your water naturally, and that's called hard water, basically. Well, if you put this ammonium sulfate in there, what it does is it binds with the magnesium, it binds with the calcium, so that can't bind with your Roundup. Because if magnesium and calcium bind with your Roundup, it neutralizes the Roundup. That's obviously not what you want. Another thing with ammonium sulfate that we're trying to do is modify the spray solution pH. With Roundup, if we can lower that pH, that seems to help things out. Ammonium sulfate does just that. Now, it's not like it's going to drop it down to a one or something like that, but it certainly is going to lower that water pH. Now, there's a lot of talk about, well, which water source should I use? How many people really even know what the pH of their water is they're using out of their well or a rural water system or wherever you're getting your water for spraying? So just use some ammonium sulfate for that reason to lowering your spray solution pH. Yeah, and when you use ammonium sulfate, it's 17 pounds per 100 gallons of water, and then you can do a good job with both the tying up hard water ions and lowering the pH. But in addition to that, there are a couple other factors here. Number one, nitrogen. There are several weeds that are nitrogen sensitive, like water hemp, for example. If you 
have any nitrogen in that solution, you just have better control out of the Roundup. But besides that, you know, it's nitrogen and sulfur. That's what ammonium sulfate is. It's fertilizer. So what does fertilizer do? It helps that weed move the Roundup faster to the growing point, and it helps the plant, the soybean plant or corn plant or whatever crop you're dealing with, it helps that crop recover a little bit quicker too. So ammonium sulfate does a lot of things. Yes, you can use a replacement product, but it's probably going to cost you more, and it's probably not going to be quite as effective as ammonium sulfate. The biggest objection I get though is uh, ammonium sulfate comes in these 51 pound bags. I don't want to have to lug the bags up to the Why top not? of my That's sprayer. That's good exercise. Well, <laughs> I just look at it this way. You don't have to. You can have a cone inductor or some kind of system down on the ground that will pump that up through the bottom of your sprayer. I mean, there's a number of different ways you can get the product in. The other thing is if you've ever had trouble with your ammonium sulfate mixing, there are different grades of ammonium sulfate. There is a fertilizer grade, there's a spray grade, and there's a number of different grades in between. Make sure you're using a spray grade ammonium sulfate. It may cost just a few cents per pound more, but it's definitely worth it. The ammonium sulfate that we've been using on our farm, we just never have mixing problems with that. Okay, let's talk about top end temperatures. We talked about low temperatures already, but top end, the main thing is not temperature. It's is your weed still actively growing? In other words, if I've got 90 degrees and zero humidity and I've had that for two weeks, my plant's probably not growing when I hit 90 again. But if I've got 90 degrees and I've had all kinds of rain over the last couple of weeks, my plant is probably still doing quite well. So you just have to use your best judgment there a little bit, but just understand it is certainly possible that that plant, once it gets to a certain temperature and it is very dry, it's gonna shut down. It's not gonna bring as much Roundup into the plant. Another problem with Roundup and why it sometimes doesn't work as well is because there's a lot of things that get mixed in with it, whether it's 2,4-D or dicamba or a lot of the pre's that we're talking about or even fertilizer sources, you really have to look at those tank mix partners. The biggest thing that I see is if you have something that really adds a lot of burn, you could burn the leaves before the Roundup gets in and that stops it from translocating down through the plant. You could also contaminate that spray solution if you had bulk fertilizer, for example. It might have dirt, it might have other contaminants. I could also hurt your Roundup. And I guess the last thing that we wanted to talk about here with Roundup is sometimes people will sell you adjuvants that, yeah, it might bump up the Roundup performance performance, but what did that do to the selectivity of the Roundup? What we're trying to say is sometimes you can put something in there that's so harsh, yes, it appears that the Roundup worked better, worked faster, but now you may have damaged the crop. So just be really careful and talk to your agronomist about these types of things. The last thing we want you to do is damage your crop just to try to get extra weed control. Well, there are a lot of things that go into making Roundup work better, and one of the weeds we're going to need some Roundup for is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 